everybody. So we've got Luke, who's our software development manager. Uh, thanks for waving there, Luke. We have Tim, who's part of our sales team. And we have Gavin, who's our COO. So you've got all the right people in the room to talk about quote and invoice management, which is a key part of our point of sale software. Uh, so Luke's going to drive this. So Luke, if you share your screen, uh, we want to take people through how it works. And through that process, we're going to give you a bit of a sneak peek into uh, a version of the software we're about to release as well. So let's get into it, Luke, and start off with quote management. Right. Do you need a hand on how to share your screen? No, no, no. I just was waiting for you to finish talking. <laughs> Rightio. Um, so okay. basically what we've got here is just got the main screen of retail and this can be customized. Um, I've just got a, a shortcut to quote and invoice management on my main screen here. Rightio. So basically it's going to bring up the last um, invoice or quote that we had up beforehand. Um, to basically start a new quote, we, we would add down the bottom left hand corner. Um, and we'd actually find that the customer that would be associated with. So we can choose a customer from our list, or we could also add new customers if we need. Sorry, Luke, if I can interrupt at that point. So just to be clear, uh, I find the customer. If I if I don't, if they're a new customer, I can create the customer at this point. Yeah, that's correct. So basically, what you can actually do is within this fine screen, we could add them in as a brand new customer within the data if we yep. needed to. Excellent. Um, basically, from here with, as well, we can specify um, specialised delivery addresses. So we can use an address that they've had um, previously, um, or if it's a, a landscaper and he's got several jobs on the go and things like that, you can add additional addresses in um, and you can give them a description so they're easily, easily found later on. Um, there's also an option for um, notes, oh, sorry, a purchase order number, and there's some notes there as well. Um, that we, we can reference later on as well. Yeah, I found that to be really popular, like you said, with landscape suppliers. Those notes are saved specifically against each address. So if on the Smith Street job, you've got to deliver it to the back of the block, it'll always have that note pre-filled at the bottom of that. Um, so what we've also got here on the right-hand side, it automatically defaults the, um, the date created and you can specify delivery addresses. Um, we can specify who's raising the quote. Um, if we do need to, we can also specify things like freight. If there, there's going to be a freight charge on there if we need to. Um, and then what we can do is we can tell it what products are going to be on there um, on that particular quote. Um, so this is a, a, a version that will be coming out later on. Um, so basically at the moment, you've got the normal price. Um, we can use prices off their profile. So if you've got a discount profile structure, um, it can uh, use the, their pricing. Um, we've got the option for um, setting menu prices, trade prices, or we also have a new option for a fixed price. It has been um, requested by some of our users. Um, the big difference is, is that the normal price, as prices change, retail prices update, um, the quote can update with those new prices. If you want to leave them as a fixed price, um, you can specify this as a fixed price and that way it'll stay at that particular rate. So Luke, let's spend a little bit of time on that. Um, just to be clear, as I'm building a quote, because the quote itself is relying on other data in the software, if that other data changes, it can lead to a quote change. Correct. And by ticking fixed price, you're locking in the price that existed at the time that this quote was created. Correct. Yeah. That's really cool. What, uh, just out of curiosity, what was that change made for? Did we have customers requesting it or? Uh, I'll, I'll, let me answer that. Um, <laughs> we uh, had a particular customer uh, with a, a lot of inventory uh, and some... Look, I, I want to say this. Uh, I don't want this. I'm, I'm not trying to have a go, but they were they were not consistent in how they were managing updating pricing in their system. They would update prices just when they staff when the staff got to it, not necessarily when the prices actually changed. And so, um, somebody in the back room might have some spare time, so they'll go and update a whole bunch of prices today, and that was going to impact quotes that they were still working on. Yeah. And so it was once we saw their process and saw that their process was a little less, um, say, organised than what we expected, 
we then said, Luke, Gavin, and I said, well, look, we need to modify the software to bring greater certainty to how people use this. And that's why this fixed price button that Luke was just showing us is there with the software now. It's really good. Okay, Luke, thank you. Just a warning with that one as well. If you uh, do do that and it uh, you access a quote that's four, five, six years old, it's going to use the pricing from four, five, six years ago. So you just need to be wary. That fixed price means it's going to be that price forever. It's, it's really fixed price, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's locked in. <laughs> yep. So basically, at this point now, what we'll do is we'll put a, a couple of items on the particular quote. Um, so basically, from here, we can either scan items or we can press enter to bring up our, our stock listing. Um, so I'm going to use two different examples here. Um, we will pick out one item here. And you can also um, have this set up a few different ways. At the moment, I've got it defaulting to one under our setup. Um, we can actually disable that if, you, if it's not applicable, where you can just manually enter in um, different values. Um, if I pop something else on there, which has a zero quantity on hand. Um, as you can see, it's just pop those items. I've got one of each on there. Once we do go save, what that will do is it's going to pop those items onto the quote. And you can see it tells us that we've currently got 33 on hand on the sticky bar. Um, and it's automatically going to want to try and allocate or supply that particular item because we've got it in stock. Um, because of the angle bar, we don't have any in stock. It's automatically said that we're not going to supply any and it's going to go onto a back order. Okay. Um, so the purpose of that is so that we can easily create a purchase order with our supplier. Um, so we can order the stock in for that particular customer. Now, you do have the ability to be able to override that. So if you know that you've got some, you can actually click in there and force the system to um, put a quantity supplied in if you need to. Uh, but most of the time, what a lot of sites will do is they'd go to this order stock option at the top. Um, it will give us the option to order just for the particular quote that we're on, or you can do it for all quotes. You've just got to be a bit careful of that because you don't want to turn around and if you've got 50 quotes in the system, you may not want to order all the stock in for it. So that's just a, an option that you do have. And when we do go create orders, um, it'll then just say it's created an order um, based on this particular quote. So that'll, so that'll create an order for the supplier for those goods in the background, will it? Correct. Yep. So what we actually do is we do highlight that in a, an orange color to identify that item has been ordered with the supplier. Um, it tells us what the order number is. So we've got a reference to it and it's, it's a status of pending. So it hasn't actually um, been sent off to the supplier at this stage. It's basically just an in-house order so far. Okay. Um, Rightio. You can also look, can't you uh, change the, I change the system setting to automatically just always use quantity supplied, can't you? Yeah, you can. That's right. So it, so where we actually had it where it was only fulfilling where it's greater than um, zero, we can have it where it automatically um, sets that to the quantity um, ordered. That's Regardless no of the quantity on hand. Correct. Yeah. No dramas at all. Um, rightio, did you want me to show setting this order off or you want to... Just continuing the quote, orders is a separate yeah. thing. So. All right, no dramas at all. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of cheat this. I'm going to say that we've actually got some of this supplied. Um, so now we've actually got it supplied in stock. I will be able to do, raise an invoice for this. So once we do go to um, print, we've got the option to do this as a quote. So basically at the moment, if I leave it as a print only, or I can do it as an email, um, I will be able to go down to preview down the bottom. And what that will do is that will preview it in a status of a quotation. Okay, so it hasn't actually um, taken anything out of the system at this stage. It's purely just a quote or some prices that we're telling a customer. Um, and at this stage, you can print it out or email it um, without any issues at all. Um, we have actually made some changes in this version as well to actually show the, the term. So if they've got credit limits on the account, it'll say if their credit limits seven days or 30 days or end a month, it'll actually state that on the quotation as well. Uh, but that's purely for um, if they're like an account customer. So, so just in terms of doing the quotes, uh, and this is probably really a question for both Gavin and for Luke. Um, are there rules that you would guide customers on 
about using the quotation side, things that they should follow when they're doing quotes. The sign <laughs> tells me there are no rules. So basic, uh, basically what would normally happen is um, a, a quote is something that we would say that um, is, is not guaranteed at this stage. So um, we're not going to turn around and, and we haven't taken the quantity out um, of your stock holdings this, at this stage because it, we don't see it as being sold as yet. It's purely speculation, a, a speculative sale. I, I think speculative is a good word there, Luke, too, because... I mean, that, that's, that's how we designed the quotation side to work. It's, it's, we're hoping to get the business. So we're quoting for the business, but it's not a done deal. Correct. Um, we did have recently um, some software ideas come through regarding the ability to be able to cancel those because there's a high chance, well, there, there is a chance that the customer might go, look, I'm not happy with the prices or it may, you may go, okay, well, this has been hanging around for the last two months. I don't want it in there as active quote. We have now given customers the ability to right click on the, the quote and actually cancel the quote. Now, what that'll do is that'll cancel the status of it. Um, and upon doing this, we've actually put some logic in there as well. So if you have already um, allocated or basic term, basically put in the supply col column that you're supplying one and you've actually associated serial numbers, it's going to remove those serial numbers. And if it's on any orders, it's going to actually remove it from those pending orders. So that way, um, if you haven't sent it off to the supplier, um, it, it, we don't accidentally order the product. You'll notice how at the top it changes its status from being a quote to cancelled. Um, and basically our quantities are all zeroed out now. Um, if they ever need to later on at any stage, we can always go back and reverse the status. So if they want to reactivate that particular quote, um, it's as simple as reversing it and it'll pull it back to a quote status. Um, upon doing that, you are going to have to go back in and pop in the quantity supply for each one of those. That's really good. Was that off the back of a software idea as well? Yeah, it was. It was on the back of a software idea. I've had a, a few people request that. Fantastic. And does that remove it from if you go to search, like look up all the outstanding quotes you've yeah. got in the system? So we've added a new filter in there. So basically, um, as you see, it's color coded. There is a new one for cancellations and they stand out bright red. So they're very easy to sort of see um, which ones are cancelled. And you can. Luke, this is not released yet? No, not at this stage. Um, just, uh, I know that's not the purpose of today's meeting, but you're going to need to change that red because it people is. who are colorblind aren't going to be able to read black on red. Okay, we can get that sorted out. So, uh, yeah, just modify your colour choice. Easy, we can get that sorted. This is pre-release, so uh, these are the things that we're still going through. So, yeah, so you do have the, that, that option to turn around and um, to, to cancel a quote. Um, now, what we've done here, we've done a, a quote for um, a customer. Um, now, sometimes people may have accounts um, and that, or they may not have an account. Um, so basically, we do have the, the ability for people to, to push this into the point of sale screen as well. So if you've raised a quote and the, then a customer comes in, they want to pay for it in cash, that's no problems at all. Uh, we can just suspend the quote in the point of sale. And what that does is that puts it into our point of sale screen with all the prices that we've already um, preset. And, and you can actually take payment from the point of sale screen as a normal transaction. And, and that works the other way as well, doesn't it, Luke, in the sense that like I know some bike shops use that where they'll start to, you know, process as a, as a sale in point of sale and then suspend it to save it in here as a quote. Yeah, that's correct. Because uh, they might start in point of sale and they say, oh, can I just get a quote for that? Yeah, that's no dramas. We can drag it into the quote invoice management. The rules around that, we must have it associated with a customer, okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. We've got to have one some way of referencing who it's for later on. And then that then allows them to print off a copy of that quote. They could email it through to that customer if they wanted to and also keep that record that they have, you know, Correct. provide a quote for it. Yeah, that's exactly right. Excellent. Um, just with the, the quotations as well, um, you can also do uh, pick slips as well. So basically um, you can do a, a pick slip um, for that particular item, which will have all the goods on that particular, um, on that particular quote. 
Um, and then before you build it or send it out, you, you can get basically um, get whoever's in the yard to, to cross off to make sure that's all there. Um, we've also added the ability, um, another software suggestion for signature and date on there as well. So you know who's done it for your back house side of things as well. Awesome. I, um, I had a customer, a landscaping business that do a lot of, uh, you know, jobs for things like retaining walls and things like that. And they'll often need to put notes either against a product on the transaction. So they might put a note saying to cut a piece of steel to a certain size, but then also notes on the overall uh, invoice or quote, maybe about delivery or um, things like that. Can you assign notes? Yeah, so we've got two ways of doing that, um, two, two parts there. So you do have this notes option at the top of the screen um, and you can add uh, notes within there. Um, basically, as you fill out the notes, it is date stamped as well. So you can use this as a, a bit of a, um, a reference for the customer as well. So you can say, oh, I spoke to them on this particular date and things like that. Um, if you're getting in pre prepared to cancel a quote, um, but you can also do that as um, a line by line note. So you can actually turn around and do the exact same thing on a line item and say, uh, cut to length, whatever. Okay. And that will actually print on the, the quote as well. So you can see it's got cut to, and the, the more you type out, the, the longer it'll go along that line. Um, and, and it's multi lined as well. So if you had a full story you wanted to pop in there, you could write a full story without any issues at all. We do also, so there's quite a few unique little settings that we do actually have within here as well. Um, so normally this is password protected. Um, up the top here, we do have the options to specify whether or not you want it, the users to be able to edit the unit prices as well. Um, some sites like the ability to actually show, okay, well, it's $55. Well, I don't want to do it as a discount. They might say, okay, I want to show it as just being $50. Um, by enabling that setting, it'll actually let you specify the unit price directly. Um, I have seen some nurseries where they say, okay, I want to, or a landscape business where they'll say, I want to quote a job, but I don't want to show it as a discount um, on there. So that way they're not seeing what the discount is. I don't know why you would want to show that they're, make, they're, they're saving money, it's, uh, but it is something that has been requested in the past. And look, just to be clear, that's only changing the sell price on that quota invoice, isn't it? It's not yeah, changing. It's not changing within the, the system yet. It's only for that particular quote. And Luke, they should use that with the set manual price or the fixed price option, shouldn't they? Yes, that's right. Yep. If um, you've got quite a few fields on there, if I didn't want like my extended GP or, and things like that on there, it, can that be turned off? Yeah, so you can turn around on the left-hand side here, um, this little calculator-looking button. Basically, you can uh, dictate what you see um, on a per-terminal basis. So basically, if you don't want to see your extended GP, you can take those options off. Um, or if there's options that aren't there, you can actually go through and just enable them uh, later on. Um, so basically simplify it if there's certain fields that you don't want to see. Yeah, a common one in that case would probably be uh, cost price if you're perhaps generating these in front of customers. So, yeah. yeah, so you could easily just go in and take that off if you don't want to actually want it. Cost. Um, at the, it's still going to show you your GP down the bottom um, just to show you how much you're making on that particular um, that invoice or quote. Um, Tim, can we ask you a couple of questions at this point? Uh, you mentioned a couple of businesses that you've spoken to about the quotation side. What types of businesses besides, say, landscaping, um, you've got, I imagine, garden centres generally, uh, produce businesses yeah. too? Look, you know what, this has been really popular, I guess, a across a heap of different types of businesses. So, you know, I, you know, I guess starting from the top, we see news agents use this um, for things like stationary orders for schools. We see bike shops use it where they might be quoting on a lot of bikes. I've had pool supply businesses use it where, you know, they install swimming pools and then they'll have the pump, the, you know, the piping filtration and all of that sort of stuff. They actually use it. Um, I had one where they kind of created templates in here. And so then when they would do a new pool build, rather than have to go in and recreate that and put the 20 or 30 items on it with all the, you know, elbow joints, the, you know, all the plumbing fittings, the pumps and whatnot, 
they simply use the copy option down the bottom and just copy that original quote, change it to the customer it needs to go to and email it that way. And it's, yeah, it's really quite flexible how this screen works. Mm. So, so pretty much any of the businesses that we're selling to that are doing quotes, so long as they're doing quotes in a, you know, a structured and straightforward way like we're presenting here, um, we're saying it's it's worth people considering. We're not saying it's perfect for everybody, and that's why uh, we think it's really helpful for people to have a proper demonstration so they can try it using data like they would have in their business to see if it's a good fit for them. Exactly, and just and do their own evaluation. Like we'll run through it, we'll show them how it works. But look, ultimately, it comes back to you know them making sure it's a good fit for their business. Um, right, Luke. Is there anything else on the quote side that you wanted to cover? Not on the not on the quote side. Oh, the only thing I would say is with um, serial numbers as well. Um, some businesses want to assign serial numbers at a quote status. Um, we normally would say it's probably not the best practice to do that side of things. You can do it, um, but if the, the best ruling is, is to, if it's a quotation, leave the serial number off there and the system will actually ask you when you do invoice at what the serial number is at that particular time. And, and Luke, I would reinforce and say, again, it goes back to what you said earlier, that a quote is speculative. Yes. And the moment you are allocating an, a serial number to something, you're no longer speculating. You're saying, this is definitely going to that customer. And the way we've designed the quotation side is that we don't see that it is a done deal at that point. That's why we're saying, you know, that's not a place for serial numbers. Correct. Okay. Um, all right. Invoice management. Luke. Um, so basically what you will be able to do, so I'll just turn this into an invoice. Um, so it's now gone into a tax invoice. Um, and what you'll actually notice now is it's actually saying that it's, it's, been, it's invoiced. Um, at any stage, you can reverse it. You've got to be very cautious with that, though, because the biggest problem is, is that um, if this has exported to accounting links and things like that, we need to take that in consideration. Um, and basically, what we've got now is when we go up to our, um, our print option, you can actually go in and see um, all quotes or all invoices for that particular customer um, if we need to. And we can print those out from here if we need to as well. Um, and then from here, you can actually print your invoices off um, and you can actually say pay specific invoices if you need to as well. So you can select multiple invoices from there um, or you can select just the one and what they'll do is it'll take you to the payment screen to, to take payment on that side of things. Um, with all our invoices, they get given a, a, a due date. Um, so basically um, the customers, when they need to pay for them based on uh, what that uh, due date is on their account, um, yeah. Gavin, what would you add about invoice management? Uh, look, I, the, the, really most of Luke's covered pretty much most of the stuff with invoice management. The uh, only thing I'd probably add is invoices can only be recorded to customers that are account customers. You can't uh, record an invoice against a customer that is flagged in the system as not being an account customer. That's a, a hard well, and fast rule the software has. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting you say that because we had somebody the other day who wanted to create an invoice for somebody who wasn't a customer and, and they were going to have a little bit of time to pay for it. And in our kind of world, in our view of accounting, that's not an invoice. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's not a... It's not a it, it doesn't fit our requirements for an invoice because for us, as you say, an invoice goes to a customer. Correct. Customers invoice goes to a customer that is, and in any, in, at any point where you're waiting for payment on an invoice, they're an invoice customer. Yeah. Um, now, regardless of, course, of whether you flagged it, whether you classify them as an account customer in your own mind or not, you're providing some type of credit to them uh, in order for them to pay. So, yeah. Now uh, it's fair to say that for decades within our software, we've had the ability within the various versions of our software, we've had the ability to suspend a sale. But that that started really in a retail world where a customer would come in and say, oh, you know, I'll pay for that at the end of the day. 
or, or I've left my wallet in the car. <laughs> yeah. And so you just suspend the sale and the customer can add things to the sale and then at whatever point they pay for it. Yep. Uh, that's not this. Invoicing is invoicing and it's invoicing to account customers. Correct. Okay. Uh, Tim and Luke, is there anything else you would add about quotations or invoice management? Well, I mean, the only thing I'd add quickly, um, and I think Luke might have even pointed this out to me a while back, uh, in the print option of that, you can actually filter on those as well. So if someone wants to print all of the, you know, uh, particular invoices from a certain day or quotes, um, you can actually, it's kind of hidden, but in those fields across the top where you've got like, you know, delivery due date, for example, Luke, yeah. there's a little toggle that appears next to it and you can put in, um, yeah, filtering. So if you wanted oh. to say between this date and that date, you could look at everything that was due for delivery next week or next month. It, um, yeah, it'll list all of that for you. Helps you really manage it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's sort of like kind of a little, you know, uh, you know, a little bit hidden. It's kind of yeah, a cool little feature. Cool. Okay. Uh, Luke, have you got anything you wanted to add? The only thing I would say is with the update that's going to come out, just going back onto the that account customer um, side of things, we, we have introduced the ability for credit limits so that they can actually say, okay, I only want to give them um, a two-month credit limit at, or a seven-day credit limit and things like that. So um, they, they'd still need to be an account customer, but that means that, that they'd only have terms for seven days. Yep. Okay. All right, now um, we're recording this early on the morning of November 11. Um, so that update that you're talking about is is quite imminent, isn't it? Yeah, we're hoping to get it out fairly soon, uh, just, just depending on testing and things like that. Uh, so to, just to clarify, when a software person says to me fairly soon, that can be, you know, anything. Uh, so when you say fairly soon, what do you mean? Uh, look, for example... We, we've identified today that we have got to change the colour red. <laughs> so yeah. uh, those, those are little things that we find along the way before it actually goes into beta sites. Um, so look, we want to get it out to be, our, our beta sites um, fairly soon. Um, so that way it's um, so, out in okay, the world. So, so we're having a bit of trouble defining what fairly soon is. Um, so is it fair to say that fairly soon would be that you would hope this update is out by the end of November? Oh, we definitely we definitely wanted him beta before the end of November. We got um, there. We, we got to a definition of fairly know, soon. He, he said we want. He didn't commit to anything. <laughs> 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 uh, look, the update Luke's talking about has got the stuff we've uh, we shown earlier in the week with the uh, delivery schedules. So uh, it's there's still a bit of work and testing to go on in that particular yeah. area. So uh, I, I guess the update I was may the end up. I was getting to the point that it's not a 2022 update. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Luke, if you stop sharing your screen. Um, so look, uh, hopefully this has been helpful for existing customers and prospective customers. It's a bit of a deep dive into what quotations look like and what invoice management looks like. Um, like anything though, uh, software is dynamic. And um, Luke's mentioned a few times how ideas have come from customers we have a software ideas process through which customers can make those suggestions. And so um, customers get to vote on them and those ideas then become part of the broader view of what Luke considers when he's looking at changes to make in the software. So thank you, everybody. Any final words? Oh, look, I mean, the only thing I'd add is if someone does want more info on that as an existing customer in our knowledge base, there's a heap of articles. So just jump in there and search for always maintenance. Yeah. Um, if it's a potential customer watching this and wants more info, by all means, sing out and we can send that info through or we can tap the time run through how it works. And Tim, just on that, they can email sales at towersystems.com.au or they can yeah. call 1300 662 957. Yep. Yeah. And they get to you or your colleagues? Either, either myself or Justin, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, happy to help. All right. Thank you, everybody. No worries. Thanks.